Hi, I'm Dhruv, and on behalf of HS Navigator, I will be presenting a webinar on game development using the Unity engine. If you have any questions, you can ping it in the Q&A chat. Game development with Unity. So first I'll go over what topics will be covered. We will be talking about how games have evolved in the past, the stage it is on now, and peek into what is what lays ahead. We will explore the Unity development environment with some live demos as well. Unity has a vast number of features and functionalities. We would not be able to cover all of them in this short call. In this webinar, we will provide a high level overview, which will serve as a base for your start in your Unity journey. Finally, we will see what the future holds for gaming. So first, what is a video game? Wikipedia describes a video game or a computer game as an electronic game that involves interaction with user interface or input device, such as a joystick, controller, keyboard, or motion sensing device to generate visual feedback. This feedback is shown on a, vi a video display device such as a TV set, monitor, touchscreen, or virtual reality headset. Over the years, the, device, the devices have evolved and changed, but the idea has remained the same. Users interact with some devices like mouse, keyboard, controller, and get feedback. Initially, the games were single player and ran on local devices. Now these days, you have online games, multiplayer that can be uh, played both locally and networked. There are multiple platforms that include PC gaming, mobile gaming, and console gaming. Video games, popularity. In this chart over here, we can see the gaming industry is generating almost, almost more than double of the combined revenue of the movie and music industry. This data is taken from the year 2019. A lot has changed since then, however, specifically with the COVID pandemic last year. The growth of video games has increased a lot in the last two years compared to movies and other types of entertainment. The revenue structure of games has also changed. Upfront revenue is being changed with game items being sold. Video games initially were targeted to teenagers, but now different types of video games are targeted to people of all ages uh, and are involved and all ages are involved in making and playing games. Nearly half of the world population plays some sort of video games and almost three, quarters of, um, uh, almost three quarters of all game players are over 18. Uh, and this is another instance of video game popularity. Uh, it can be seen in this picture. It shows the sales revenues of two big game, game, game releases in movie and game industry respectively. The revenue for GTA was almost doubled than that of the movie released around the same time. Video game evolution. This chart shows the video game landscape evolved over time. During the 70s and 80s, most of the games were arcade or some type of console. During the later half of 80s, PC games started to pick up and it dominated the gaming world along with consoles in the 90s and the first decade of this century. In the last decade, console and PC games continued to grow, but there was an exponential growth in mobile games using smartphones. In the coming decades, we predict to see similar growth on AR or VR systems and cloud gaming to further increase the video game market share. Video game components. So this, is, this slide shows a list of the basic video game components that almost all games have. The first thing is the camera, which controls what is visible on the display device at the time. Then we have lighting. You can control light intensity, shadow direction, etc., for a realistic environment. Then we have characters, which is the player's movable object. We have game objects, which are all other objects in the scene that the player interacts with. Then we have um, basic interactions, such as collision, picking up objects, etc. Then we have animation, which is required for showing any movement or any other um, basic animation in the scene. And finally, we have the stage or the world. This is the design and layout of the game. 
It could be used to show the main menu, the level selection, different scenes for different levels, environments, etc. Now we're going to look at um, top level code. This shows how basic game code works. The system reads a user input and then updates the scene based on the input and renders the scene with the updated object. All of these code runs multiple times every second, depending on how many frames per second you get. The more game objects you have, the more processing power you need. Specifically when detecting collisions, GPUs are designed to work especially well for these um, types of operations. Now we'll be talking about a game engine. There are lots of small things that need to be done to create a realistic looking environment in games. For, for example, the game needs to show the correct perspective and position of all objects in a 3D space, making sure the correct shadows hide, hiding objects based on view angles, etc. Also, to show correct physics behavior with gravity, explosions, and other sorts of physics, uh, this game engine is also required. Other important and difficult functionality is to find when two moving objects collide in a 3D space. Playing around with sound and animating objects are another key aspect of all good games. All of these features are provided by the game development software called gaming engines, so that game developers don't need to spend much time thinking about these basic um, things and, focus, and are able to focus on their gameplay. Unity and Unreal Engine are two very popular game engines. Now we'll be looking at Unity specifically. As we mentioned earlier, Unity is a game engine that takes care of all the details of the game interactions, providing features for 2D, 3D, AR, and VR. It provides a visual editor where we can create a 3D space and place to organize game objects in the scene visually as needed. It supports scripting to control all aspects of the game and objects. Once the game is created in Unity, it can be exported to a large number of platforms. You can easily control the player's movement, camera movement, object interactions, gravity, and other simple components that are required to make a game. Unity started with the goal of making game development universally accessible. It gives users the ability to create games and experiences in both 2D and 3D and the engine offers primary scripting in API and C-sharp languages. It also supports newer platforms like virtual extended reality platforms Oculus, PlayStation VR, Google AR Core, Apple's AR Kit, Windows Mixed Reality HoloLens, and um, via Unity XR SDK, Steam VR, and Google Cardboard. We have a number of consoles and systems where games can be played, including Xbox, PC, Mac, and mobile devices, PlayStation, Switch, etc. Traditionally, each system required games to be developed in their own environment, which, which is different than other systems. It is very tedious for any game developer to recreate the same game for different systems while taking care of different respective and specific requirements. Unity solves that problem. Once you create a game in Unity, you can export it, export it to any game system. Now we'll be looking at assets in Unity. A Unity asset is an item that you can use in your game or project. An asset, an asset may be um, a file outside Unity, such as a 3D model, an audio file, an image, or any other types that Unity supports. It can be images that we use as a background or as a texture for a game object surface. Sound files can be used for audio feedback, such as a sound for walking footsteps, jumping, collision sound, etc., or background music. Different 3D models for games or game objects can be imported from, the, uh, from lots of popular 3D rendering softwares. Similarly, we can create or import other animations and reuse them in the game. Unity game structure. A game is a collection of scenes. In other words, a game can have one or more scenes. Scenes have many game objects, and um, it is where all the game activities take place. Game objects are placed in the scene where they interact with each other, and the animation is played as needed.
Now we will be looking at a scene. Scenes are where you work with content in Unity. They are assets that contain all or part of a game or application. For example, you might build a simple game in a single scene, while for a more complex game, you might use one scene per level, each with its own environment, characters, obstacles, decorations, and UI. You can create any number of scenes in a given project. Next, we'll be looking at game objects. All of the basic objects that are placed in the scene are game objects. These include characters, props, scenery, etc. Some instances of game objects are buildings and characters. And in this picture over here on the slide, you can see every single thing that you see is a game object. The couch, the door, the desk, everything. Now we will be looking at components. Components give game objects properties. Um, and you can uh, modify these components within Unity to make different effects in the scene. Some examples of game properties include size, position, color, colliders, animations, animators, physics. Now we will be looking at basic Unity script. Unity provides script functionality to control different aspects of the game. It supports programming in C-sharp language, an industry standard language similar to Java and C++. Unity, com Unity comes with and is integrated with Visual Studio to create and edit the script. You can debug the code as well in this software. The basic skeleton code is attached to each game object. You can see that there is a start method and an update method. The start method is called once, each, for, once for each game object. The update method gets called each frame, depending on how many frames per second your game gets. You will need to write the code in each of these methods to control different game behaviors. For example, in the update method, there will be code to handle user input every frame and to change the object's properties every frame respectively. For example, moving the object, changing the color, etc. And now uh, we will be looking at some supported systems. He listed here are some systems that Unity can support and export its game to. Most of the popular systems are included, such as PC, Android, iOS, Xbox, etc. But this is not the complete list. There are more and new systems that are constantly being added to this list. And as you can see here, a lot, a lot of the popular softwares and platforms are supported by Unity. And now we will be looking at some popular games that were um, made based on Unity. Unity has proven time after time that it's here to stay. Countless number of games have been made with Unity, and some of them became instant classics, like Angry Birds 2, Pokemon Go, which uses AR. On the other hand, there are indie games, like Inside, that were also very well liked. Listed here are some of the popular games with Unity. Chances are you have played at least one of these. Currently, Overcooked is one of my favorites. Some are for mobile and other are for PC on this list. Um, and this is a Unity download link. Unity is free for personal use. It comes with all the components in build to create a game. You may have to download uh, download extra game objects if you don't want to build everything yourself, which a lot of, a lot of which you can get for free. Even the free version comes with all of the features. It comes with Visual Studio as well as a compile and debug to debug your scripts. To export to export game to mobile devices, for example Android, you will need to download Java JDK and other components, which Unity will guide you once ready for exporting. Okay, so now we'll be moving on to a live demo with Unity. Okay, I'm going to share my screen now.
Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. So we'll start off by seeing how we can download Unity. Um, so you can just go to the official store.unity.com website and you can um, download it from there. There is there is a free version and a paid version, but then um, you can you can basically get the free version with all the same features. Now we will be looking at um, a sample scene. So this is how Unity looks like when you create a new project. Okay, so um, what you start off with is a camera and lighting. And first we'll look at the hierarchy. This contains a list of all the different game components in your scene right now. And as of now, we only have two things, the main camera and directional lighting. But as we add more objects to our scene, they will come up here in the hierarchy. Then on the bottom over here, we have assets. And these assets include um, things such as pictures, textures, and anything we download and import into our project to be used. Then on the right, we have the inspector. This has various properties and components. For example, if you select directional lighting, we can see position, rotation, scale, and then specific things for lighting, such as lighting color, intensity, etc. So we can start off by creating a cube. So we can go to game object, 3D object, and cube. And I'm going to bring the position to 0, 0, 0, right here. So the three basic um, transformations are movement, rotation, and scaling. So um, what we can do here with, it, with the first tool is move it on each axis individually. And as you can see on the right, the position is also updating. And then if we click this, we can switch to rotation, from which we can rotate on different axes. And uh, as you can see here, the rotation is also updating. And then we can resize like this. And as you can see here, the scale is also updating. So now uh, we can bring everything back to normal. OK. So um, we can start off by making a sample scene. By uh, We will add a 3D object, and um, we can add a plane. And we'll move that to the center by putting 0, 0, 0, and put that down. So first, what we can do is add um, some color to this. So I, al I already imported and downloaded a wooden texture. So all we have to do is drag it and drop it, and it gets a wooden texture on. And as you can see, because we have a lighting, it's casting a shadow of the cube on the, on the plane. OK, so now um, we can adjust the camera as well. This is a camera preview. We'll use a rotation feature to angle the camera straight at our scene. And now if we run the game, you can see the cube is floating in the air. This is because um, it does not have a rigid body component. So we can add that over here in the inspector. And what the rigid body does is it gives it a mass and allows gravity to be used, which we ticked over here. So now if we play it, you can see that the cube drops and lands on the plane. And it also uh, notice how it lands on the plane and doesn't go straight through. That's because we have a collider component added as de by default. If we uncheck the box collider and play it again, it goes straight through. So like that, we can have um, various different types of colliders. And now we can um, we can make a simple ramp to try um, some basic procedures. So we'll we'll use this cube to act as a ramp. We'll make it thin, and we'll rotate it. And then we can expand it this way. And we'll also add the wooden texture on it. OK. And now we can um, add a 3D object and a sphere, bring it to the center. We can add this to make it look better. And then once again, if we play it right now, it doesn't have a rigid body, so it's going to be floating. 
Oh yeah, and we have to remove the rigid body from here so it doesn't keep falling. Okay, so we're going to add a rigid body. And then you can see the ball rolls in. But then as you can see, it falls off. So what we can do is um, you can do Control D to duplicate. So we just made a duplicate of this by clicking Control D. Now I'll remove the rotation. Uh, turn it this way. Turn it, turn it uh, vertical. And then if you don't want to, if you don't want to show this wall and you just want an invisible wall, what we can do is uncheck the mesh renderer property. So now this cube is only a box collider. We'll make it a little taller. So now um, it's physically present over there, but you can't see it. So if we play, if we play um, the, the game now, you can see it'll collide with it, but it won't fall off. So those are some basic, some of the basic features in Unity. And now uh, we can move on to making a terrain. So we can go to game object, 3D object, and terrain. And as you can see, the terrain is really big compared to a small plane. So I'll go over the basic uh, modeling for a terrain. So first, you can go to the paint terrain section over here. And then select different things, such as raise or lower height. And then we'll start off with this. So basically what this does is it allows you to go up, up or down with your terrain. And then you can control the opacity, which is basically how strong or how intense your um, height raising is. If you have a low opacity, it's going to raise much slower, much smoother. And then if you have a much higher opacity, as you can see, it goes up really high, really quickly. OK. And then we have brush size, which just shows how big each brush is. And from the brushes section, you can pick different shapes and different sizes of brushes, such as a star or some random, some random shapes like this one to get some uneven terrain. OK. And then um, what you can do is select different other, other different features, such as paint texture. We can select this grass. And then um, ma make it the color of the grass. So this is the base. This is the base terrain color now. Instead of being um, a plain white color, now we can have a grass color to make it look more natural. And then um, there's other things such as smooth height. So as you can see, if you use the raise and lower terrain feature, and your um, your land is very uneven, such as this area over here, you can go to the smooth height, make the brush uh, make the brush a little bigger, and then you can smoothen it out to make it a little more even and less um, pointy. So this helps it just gives it a more natural look. And if you want it to smooth even um, harder, you can increase the opacity, which I'm doing right now. And then as you can see, it's still relatively uneven, but there are no pointy or popping out areas like there were before. So it looks a lot more natural. Um, and then what you can do is go to the tree section. And then um, you can, uh, by the way, I, before we started this, I already downloaded and imported trees to save time. So you can go to edit trees add trees, and then you can select any tree from here. So I'm going to select this tree, and then add. Then I'm going to select the next tree. We're going to do this for like three or four trees right now. OK. And then what we can do is we can just add trees onto our um, layout. Once again, there's tree density and brush size. So we can add trees and then change. Oh, and we can randomize the height. So this is basically showing the minimum height. This is showing the maximum height of trees so that it looks a little uneven and spread out. 
because you don't want the exact same tree to be all over the place. And then we can start, go through all the types of trees that we have and put them all around. Okay, and then what we can do is um, go to th this section in which we can add grass. So we're gonna add a grass texture. And as you can see, we have a lot of options to choose from. I'm gonna start off with a plain grass and add. And then you can go use your brush Turn up the opacity a bit. And then paint grass all around. And now as you can see, now we if I click off of it, we have a 3D grass. It's not just a texture. As opposed to um, this section where it's just a plain texture. Here we have 3D grass put all over the texture. And then to add some variety, we can um, add different types of grass, or maybe some flowers in the middle too. So I'll take some blue flowers. Uh, I'm going to turn down the opacity and target strength, because we don't want the flowers as abundant as the grass. And then we'll put them all around. Oh, we have to select the flowers and put them all around. And then what we can do is uh, add various other types of grasses to add more um, diversity. I'm going to turn down the strength for this. OK, and then now, as you can see, we have some red red flowers all over the place as well. And then um, what you can do is you can also add um, various other things, such as rocks and stones. Uh, over here, I imported this asset earlier. And then you can just add small rocks all over the place. To add more, um, to give it a more natural look. And then if you want, you can always add more trees and make it more, more of a dense area. And then um, we can also change around the lighting a bit. So if we go to the directional lighting, we can, um, as you can see, there's a big shadow over here. And the shadow is coming here based on the direction of the lighting. So if we bring it, if we bring the lighting here, we can um, turn on the rotate feature and see as we rotate the lighting, everything rotates along with it. And then if we bring the lighting almost straight down, you can see the shadows are also becoming short. So you can see how the lighting is directly impacting all of this. And then you can pick the color of the lighting. And that, that basically changes the tint of everything around it. But for now, we're just going to go with um, white lighting or slightly yellow. And then we have intensity, which basically shows how bright the light is. So you can have um, different varied intensities like that. And then um, th this is directional lighting, which is present, present all over the map. But then what we can do is add um, specific types of lighting, such as spotlight. And then uh, we can bring it over here. And then this type of lighting just adds, it's a different type of lighting. So this is one example of a light. And then there's another type of light called area lighting. And uh, these lightings don't affect the whole um, map, unlike directional lighting. So this can be used to do things like light up a specific room or things of that sort. And then you can um, import different, different um, textures, different assets, and different objects to make this place look more realistic. For example, you could get a water asset and it make a small pond over here, or you could do things like that. And then um, we'll also adjust the camera to practice camera control a bit. 
So we can bring we can bring the camera right over our um right over our terrain that we just made. So we're gonna bring it here and rotate it around. Make it face down and bring it a bit to the side. And turn it a bit. And now if we play, as you can see, it's overlooking our uh, main scene, the turn that we just made. And you can also see the grass has a slight effect of the wind. It, it shakes around a bit. That's, that's another um, property of the grass, which can also be edited in the terrain settings. And then um, another thing is, if, if you want to temporarily hide an object without deleting it, what you can do is select it over here and just uncheck it. So let's say um, let's say we want to temporarily hide our terrain because we're working on this area, but we want to bring it back later. We don't want to delete it. What we can do is select the terrain and just uncheck it. And select these and uncheck them. So then, as you can see in the hierarchy, there um, they change the the font type changes. And then, if we want to bring them back, we just click on them in the hierarchy and check them back again. Okay, and then um, yeah, and then we can just select all of them and bring them back. Select the terrain and bring it back. Okay, so now um, we're gonna move on to a, another game demo, a game that that was already created before. Okay, so this is gonna be our game demo. This is a very simple game, and it's using it's um, using basic planes over here, as you can see in different colors. And in this case, we split. We're doing a split screen. On the right, we have the scene, with the editor, and on the left, we have the canvas screen. And in this game, what we have to do is um, we're gonna be controlling this cube, and we have to go over every green space and change the color of it. So I'm going to hit play. And then what we're going to do is go over each cube and change it. And then if we pause the game, we can look at um, the properties of each component live in the middle of the game. So as you can see, the cube is here. It's updated. This color is updated. And everything is um, live right now. Okay, and then we uh, we can finish the level by changing each color, and then we have a script that says um, if you go on the same thing same block again, it reverts back, and also because there's a collider here as I showed with the sphere and the cube before, it can't pass through because of, because of the collider, so we have to remove that barrier by changing all the colors, and now we can pass through to the next level. And then we select level two. Over here, you can see we have a simple um, house prop added just to make the level, level a little more um, vibrant. And once again, we added a collider to it, so the cube cannot go into that. The cube can only go to other places and then finish the level. And then this is a final level. We added a small picture in the background to act as, um, to act as a background area. As you can see in the editor, it's just a simple plane underneath um, this, underneath their level design. And in the game, it looks like the game is actually taking place over there. And then you reach here on a level selector. And what I've done is I've also um, imported this game onto Android, onto my phone, so I can also download from here. So I'm going to open it on my phone.
Okay, so this is um, my phone, and then on here I've imported it from Unity. So as you can see, we can select the level, and we also have the audio. And then we can move on to the next level. And what do we also have is a menu over here. So if you click these three lines on the top left corner, you can click it and go back to the level select. And then right now we only have three levels, but then there will be more later. Okay, and then that's basically the, the Android demo. And now we'll be demoing a, another game. And this one is slightly different than the previous one. This one is designed mainly for PC. And in this one, we have a much larger terrain that has a lot of different components on it already. And we also have a playable, movable character with some basic enemies around with animations. So first, I'll give you a quick tour of the terrain. As you can see, there are no large mountains on the basic terrain, just small, um, uneven terrain to make it to give it a natural look. And then, as you can see, I use different paint terrain features to make a small ro roadway in the middle. And then there are small bushes, shrubs, rocks, and um, other small plants all around the terrain to give it a natural look. And then we have lots of low poly trees to make it run easier. And then over here, I added a lot of rocks. And by the way, even though it looks like these are random rocks, they're just the same rocks that I rotated, rescaled, resized, and repositioned to make it look like it's ever set, even though it's just a group of the same like four or five rocks. And then we have the path that continues. And over here, we have um, a small pond, lake, oasis kind of place. And um, I used a sand texture over here with the water over here. And this water uses an extra camera to make a new reflection. And then we have a lot of simple objects all around the place made by very simple cubes placed together, cubes, cylinders, etc. And then back here, we have um, a very small town made out of very simple shapes once again and basic textures. And then we just have a hill over here. We have a small um, boat house here. And this boat is animated to um, like go up and down and sway with the water. Then we have a treasure chest enemy over here that's animated along with this, this enemy and this flying enemy. And they have animations that um, make, they only trigger when the player goes near them, which I will demonstrate in a little bit. Then over here, we have a gate that has an open and close animation. We have a fire, and um, this fire is also animated. But along with that, we added um, some local lights over here. So this light makes it seem like the fire is emitting its own light, when in reality, just a small area light over here, which is why this area also looks relatively bright. And then over here, we have a small town made by lots of, once again, regular cubes that are rescaled and pre-positioned. And over here, we have a worker when we play the game, he's going to be animated to be working over here. And then we have another openable gate. And then this is like a mystical pond kind of place. With And this water is using a different type of shader, different type of lighting than the previous water area. And then the I, I made these um, dripping things sort of light bulbs. So they also emit their own light. And I gave this goo, goo kind of thing a reflective property in the inspector area which is why you can see a bright reflection off of it. And then finally over here, we have another area of the scene. 
which is on top of a, a house on top of a mountain. And these are torches, which are lit up with fire when the game starts. And um, the house is also emitting light, making it look like there's light inside the house. And finally, I added a reflection on the glass, so you can see the entire place through the glass. So first, I'll start off by showing the, um, the enemy scripts. So um, basically, the enemies, well, if, they, if you get close enough, they're going to start approaching you. And when they get close enough, their attack animation is going to play. So as you can see, when we start the game, they don't see me because I'm way too far. But then if I start getting close, he's, they're going to run towards me and start attacking me. So this treasure chest is attacking me, and this spine, spine animal is also attacking me. And then if I go away a bit and turn around, you can see they followed me. And this is their attack animation being played. Okay, so then we'll look at their script to look at the basic components. So let's look at the treasure chest monster. So um, as, as we mentioned before, there are ba three basic methods. The first one is um, void start. So this one is only called once and it initializes object. And over here, we're um, basically getting the animators, the animations, and set, locating the player object into a variable. And this only happens once at the beginning, because we don't have to constantly get the animations or constantly locate the player. Then this, this is an update method. In the void update method, it is called every single frame. So we have a basic, uh, we have a variable called trigger distance. And then if the distance is less than trigger distance, then it's gonna, um, uh, we're gonna make a transformation to make it look at the player's position. And if not, it's gonna be um, the default, which is a variable that we set up earlier. And then we have um, various other cases, which say that if the player starts getting at a certain distance, start walking towards the player by updating the position to make it closer to the player. And then we have a variable called attack distance so if you're close enough to the player to attack, we're going to play the attack animation, which is basically the attack animation, just like it sounds. So now we're going to go back and look at it after reading the script. So as you can see, they just rotated because we reached closer. Now we're going to get even closer. They're going to start approaching us. And now they're in their attack distance, from which they're going to start attacking us. And as you can see in the animator, we have um, different different loops. And these loops are basically um, how how they're going to attack. And we have different um, trigger different triggers. For example, we have an angry trigger, and the angry trigger will only go into one loop. The normal trigger will go into one loop. The walk trigger will go into one loop, and the attack trigger will go into one loop. And then um. Based on which loop you are, it looks like the um, character is doing a different thing. And these four tags are going to be called in the script. So in the script, we have, like, if the distance is really big, we're going to be in the normal loop. But then if the distance is really short, we're going to call the attack loop, which makes it look like he's attacking. Now we're going to look at the, um, the this animation over here. This will take user input to open and close a fence. OK, so if we get close enough, what we can do is click the fence and open or close it. And then we can walk through. And then this is the fire that I was talking about before that's animated in low poly to make it run easier. And then as you can see, the light is bright right around the fire. And then I also added some dust all around the place, which you can see flying through there. And then um, we, we can go to the village and see the animated worker doing his job.
and as you can see, his uh, his animation is constantly playing, and it looks like he's um using a hammer to do some work. And then also, as we talked about earlier, there are colliders, which stop two objects from going into each other, which is present in all the um, items over here. For example, if I want to walk into this table, it won't let me because of a collider. It's going to force me to go around it. Or if I want to walk into this um, well over here, once again, I can't do it because of a collider. So that's how you use a collider in-game. And then we can go back here and have a look at the different lighting effects over here in that area. So we can once again we can open the fence and close it. And then as you can see when we enter the water we'll have a different kind of effect to make it look like a magical place. And then I also added a steam effect on some of them like that one to give it a different effect. And then also we can look at some um, nature, some ideas that give this environment more life by adding uh, things such as natural animals over here. So if we start on the other side, as you can see over here, I have um, some animals that are animated. Right now they're not moving around, but you can do that. You can make the bird fly around the whole area and same for the butterfly. And then we have a sitting down bird, a squirrel, and a turtle. All of these are giving the place more life. And then we can walk through this path over here that we made. And once again, we use different terrain painting techniques. And uh, there, we have a lot, much larger variety of trees as well. It's not just three or four trees. And then we have some random plants here and there. And we don't want to give the plants colliders because if we had to jump over every single plant, we wouldn't be able to walk normally. And then we have lots of rocks and stones all over the place and bushes too. And then as you get over here, we're going to approach the sand area that we made. And then once again, everything in the sand area has a collider, so you can't go in. You can't um, go through objects. For example, if I try to walk into the wall, I cannot. Or if I try to enter through the object, I cannot. And then, and then um, we can use once again. There's a collider on this one as well, which is why we're not falling straight through. And then there's a the big pier over here. And we can jump into the water from here. And it's giving, once again, a different effect while also having reflections. And then um, I'll also be showing you the, the asset store. The asset store is how you can download various um, different assets and props for your scene. So over here, the tab, there's a tab called Asset Store. And then um, you can basically look for almost anything you want. So let's say you want to build a city. So you can just look for a city. And then find different assets. And you can find the asset that you like. And then um, while these are paid, you can go to the um, filters and bring this all the way down to zero. And now you can find free city props, such as a destroyed city, simple city pack, city package, etc. So let's say you want to download the simple city plane. So you can just click on it and then download it and then import it. And after it's imported, when you're in your scene, you're going to go to your assets, and you'll have a folder that's um, that has the respective name, Simple City Plaque Plane. And then you can go into that folder, bring out the prefabs, and put it onto your scene. And then we have, or like, we also have other small places. This place doesn't have any real animations yet, but we're still working on that. 
And then there's also another river animation, which you can see here. It's much different than the other lakes that we saw before. Oh, and there's also another enemy that we have. As you can see, this water, it's not like the lake where it's that see-through. It's a rapidly moving river. And you can also see the water's movement. You can tell that it's moving to the right. Okay, that's it for the live demo. Now I'll be moving back to the slides. Okay, the future of video games. The rise of AR and VR will continue. Game developers will pursue realism, and players will pursue the ability to live in a game. Esports continues to rise in popularity, especially in the COVID-19 era. Soon, there will be very little difference between real-life sports and esports equivalent. 5G will be critical to the support of streaming platforms and will reduce latency. It will make it possible to stream console-quality games on mobile. And platforms like Steam and Stadia are constantly growing very fast. OK, and then. Um, the, these are your next steps. To download Unity, use the Unity community and numerous YouTube tutorials. Um, and there are also lots of free assets on the web that you can um, use and gain. And then you can also learn Blender to create your own Unity models and assets instead of importing other people's assets from the asset store. And this concludes the presentation. I hope it provided some good information. There is a lot to be learned and a lot of new um, developments happening in the gaming world. I hope this gives you enough information to start your journey towards game development. And you can always reach out to me at droobs.ry at hsnavigator.org. And also, um, there's my LinkedIn. You can connect to me if you want. Thank you.